All right, we're going to get our service started this morning. It's good to be in the Lord's house, and as always, it's such a joy to see you today in the Lord's house. Glad to have our visitors with us. Appreciate you being here today, and I certainly hope and pray that you'll enjoy the service. Pray something to be said or done that will encourage your heart. If you're here this morning, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Well, let me just say this morning, we hope the gospel is presented in such a way that you'll see the need to accept him as Savior. I'd like to mention a couple of prayer requests before we start. Uh, number one, we need to pray for Brother Wolf. He's still in the VA hospital in Columbia, and uh, Brother Wolf is having a difficult time right now. And so you pray for him and pray that God will give him the comfort and the peace that only the Lord can give. Pray for his sister, Carol. And by the way, uh, she, I talked to her yesterday, and she told me that their mother uh, had been taken to the hospital, thought maybe she may have had a stroke. So that's Brother Wolf's mother and uh, Carol's mother, mother. So pray for them and pray for her mother. Pray that the Lord will be with them. I, she was sort of torn because she's 150 miles away between the two. So uh, just pray for that family, that God will just be with them. And then Sister Barbara Carver, one of our members of our church, had, hadn't been able to come uh, very much because of her physical needs. And being in a nursing home, she's in the village at Pelham Hospital. Uh, in critical condition, and so we need to keep her in your prayers and also pray for the family during this time that God will comfort and be with them. And then, of course, we have folk we've been praying for for months and months. Brother Sam's not here this morning. Pray for him. Brother Jesse, good to see Sister Woodbury come in this morning. Keep her in your prayers. And then we need to pray for each other. All of us need prayer. We need to pray for our church and our church family and just pray that God's hand will stay upon us. He'll protect us. Build a hedge around us and pray that we'll just keep on keeping on to Jesus come. And I don't know about you folks, but I sort of hope he comes today. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't that be wonderful to go out? You say, well, preacher, I'm not ready. Well, I'll tell you right now, you better get ready. We don't know when he's coming, but we do know that he is coming. So it's good to have you this morning and certainly hope and pray that you'll uh, be blessed today. Pray for the song service. Pray all this done and please him. Let's stand if you would, please. Let's go to the Lord in word of prayer and ask God's blessing to be upon us. And pray that the Lord will just be with us today as only he can. Amen. God bless you. It's good to have all of you here this morning. Look around, just trying to check out everybody. Of course, we're missing some folk, but we're glad that you're here, and we just look forward to a great day. Brother Robert Thomas, would you pray for us this morning? Yes, God's blessings to be upon us. Remain standing, take a hymn book, turn to page 54, count your blessings. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanzas. Sing out now. <clears throat> when upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings.
may be seated. for Jamie Allen. He's going to come and sing for us. Uh, some of you may not know, uh, we've had uh, three people, if I'm correct, Pastor, last three years to be saved in the tent, correct? Right. Amen. That's worth it all, isn't it? Amen. I'm glad God saves those sinners. And I'm glad I was one of them. Amen. Amen. You pray for Brother Jamie. Well, God does still save us. Amen. If you've been saved, then even though you may be going through a tough time or a trial or a storm, He's always going to be there. And you can always hold close to Him.
I have journeyed through the long dark night out on the open sea by faith alone side unknown and yet his eyes were watching me anchor holds though the ship is battered the anchor holds though the sails are torn I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas the anchor holds in spite of the storm and I've had visions I've had dreams and I've even held them in my hands But I never knew that they could slip right through Like they were only grains of sand But the anchor holds Though the ship is battered The anchor holds Though the sand are torn and I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas but the anchor holds in spite of the storm I have been young, but I'm older now. There has been beauty these eyes have seen. But it was in the night storms of my life Oh, that's where God proved His love to me The anchor holds Though the ship is battered the anchor holds Though the sail's been torn And I have fallen on my knees As I face the raging seas But the anchor holds in spite of the storm and I have fallen on my knees 
as I face the raging seas, the anchor holds in spite of the storm. Amen. I appreciate Brother Jamie singing that song. Of course, he's going through some trials and his family, his grandmother. And it seems like the whole church is going through something. Got to do with physical. But I'm glad spiritually that the anchor holds. Because Paul did say that this old tabernacle is going to wear out. But I'm glad of the anchor of the soul. And I'm glad that Jesus is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I remember hearing a preacher preach one time, said his old grandfather's tea bottle. Said, I'd get out there and crank that thing. Well, I'm going to tell you what, Lord God, if that song doesn't turn your crank, right. amen, something's wrong, amen? Right. Amen. I'm glad, Lord, that his name 
that he saved my soul from a burning hell. You know, the mansion is going to be beautiful. Even the Bible describes heaven and you think about it, but just getting there and knowing that he is the light Amen. of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Ooh, you better sing this song out. Glory to his name. The choir will be dismissed. We'll sing the first, second, and last stanza. Please stand. Page 398. Sing it like you mean it, church. Now at the cross where my Savior died, now where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where He took me in. Glory to His name. Loosen up, church. Glory to His name. Amen. You're in God's house. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was a blood of life. Glory to His name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, just a few minutes, the preacher's going to preach. Loosen up. I realize you may be stowed up in your body and you're tired, but I pray to God the spirit will just swell up in you so much you just have a shouting spell. Amen? Amen. Devil's got no place in this place here. This is God's house. You're God's people. Say it loud, amen, for Jesus. I think you can do better than that. One more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Ed was going to sing, and then after that, Brother Leon is going to sing. You pray for these gentlemen.
Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I was, uh, this is an odd little story. I was driving to work yesterday and going up Highway 11 there at Fingerville, if any of you know where that is, uh, right where Needham Mill used to be. There's a bridge that crosses the Packwood River, and right on the guard railing of that basin of that bridge was an Emmanuel Baptist Church sticker. I never had noticed it till yesterday, and I don't even know what made me notice it then, but I thought that was odd that it'd be way up there <laughs> in the sticks. Um, I woke up this morning with a sore throat, so I'm going to ask the preacher to come and help me on the course of this song. Uh, I found a lily in my valley. You like this song. This is cool. Surprise. I got surprised. I guess I was a surprise. Lily in my valley. All alone and broken hearted Trying to calm the raging battles in my mind Searching for the answers That my troubled soul just could not seem to find I saw a flower blooming where there was no rain nor sunshine And I knew not that this flower would change The rest of my life I found the lily in my valley In my valley I found strength when I was I found a place to leave my burdens. <laughs> Whoa, yes! I found a refuge from my storms. A place where I could train my dark skies for beaming rays of sunshine. I found a lily in my valley. And he blooms all the time. Well, I hope yours is blooming this morning. Now, if you're down and broken hearted, and you just can't seem to find peace of mind, you're searching for the answers, but your problems are getting worse. All the time Just reach, reach your, your hands, hands to Jesus He'll take, take you in and break those chains that bind He'll be your lily in your valley And you can watch Him bloom all the time I found the lily in my valley, in my valley. He'll be straight when I am warm. He'll be the place to leave your burdens. Amen, yes. He'll be the refuge from your storm. Sunshine, he'll be the lily in your valley, and he'll bloom all the time. Sing it this last time, with us. I found the lily in my valley. I found strength when I was warm. I found a refuge from my storm, from my storm, a place that I could shade my dark skies, for beaming rays of sunshine. I 
I found the lily in my valley And he blooms all the time He'll be the lily in your valley And he'll bloom all the time Leon, you come on, please. Has he got another shirt like that? Number eight, bro. <coughs> I tried being the best that I could be But the best I could do was not good enough to save me God's Holy Spirit showed me that I was lost And I found the answer when I knelt at an old rugged cross He did for me what I could not do for myself. He did the saving, I did the crying for help. After I tried everything, only Jesus was left. He did for me what I could not do for myself. Ain't that true? I tried finding salvation in what I could do I even tried kneeling at an altar and praying through I trusted my feelings for what I could understand But when I trusted Jesus, He made me a brand new For me, what I could not do for myself, He did the saving, I did the crying for Him. After I tried everything, only Jesus was left. He did for me what I could not do for myself. He did for me what I could not. Do do for myself. He did the saving. I did the crying for him. After I tried everything, only Jesus was left. He did for me what I could not do for myself. Amen. He did for me what I could not do for myself. For myself. Praise the Lord. I about put my foot in my mouth there. That's Brother Leon wanted me to help him. I thought he'd go sing in Spanish there when that thing started off. <laughs> I knew I'd be in trouble then. The only thing I know in Spanish is taco and burrito. But I'm glad I know Jesus and the free pardon of sin. I don't know a lot of things, but I'm thankful I know that today. I'm glad I know he saves old sinners. I'm glad he sustains the saints, too, by the way. After he saves you and me, he just don't leave us out there to flounder around and, and, and try to get by the best way we can. Hey, we get by by the best way. Hey, the only way, and that's Jesus Christ. And he always meets our needs and takes care of us. Boy, that's a blessing. I praise the Lord for that. Let me mention a couple of announcements right quick. Uh, don't forget this coming Saturday, uh, Grayson's having his 
fifth birthday party. And that's going to be at Chunky Cheese from 12 until 2. And Cassie's sitting up here as RSVP. What that means is if you want a piece of pizza, you better tell Cassie <laughs> that you're coming. Okay? All right. So don't forget that. Then we have a card of thanks here. It says, uh, Dear church family, your thoughtfulness is appreciated. Thanks so much for your prayers and the gifts while I was down and out in, down and out. I can't make out that sister. What is that? In Duncan. Well, that's where she stays. <laughs> I love, I love one, I love each and every one of you. Love Diane. P.S. Robert says, uh, thanks also. So we're glad Sister Diane's doing well. I'm glad she's here today after having open heart uh, uh, surgery and having seven bypasses, which I have never heard of before. But anyway, the number seven is the number of completion. The number seven is the number of perfection. And I'm glad today to report to you God does all things well. God's not always going to answer your prayer the way you want him to answer it. But he's going to answer it in a way that's going to bring him glory and going to be for your good. And we have to learn to accept that, and we have to learn to trust that. The flowers here today are placed here by Diane in honor of Brother Robert and Sister Diane's 26th wedding anniversary. And also in honor of Brother Robert's birthday, which is tomorrow. And to thank Robert for being such a good nurse while I was recovering. <laughs> So uh, he done a good job. <laughs> I appreciate. It. Hey, like the only newlywed game or something there. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, bless your heart. I appreciate brother Ro uh, brother Robert and sister Diane. They've been a real blessing to our church, as well as so many other folks that God has sent our sent this way to be a part of this work and this ministry. And I want you to know today, Father, that folks, I don't take that for granted. Uh, God could have put you anywhere. But he chose to put you here. And if there's anything that I want to see done with the membership of Emmanuel Baptist Church, if God planted you here, I want to see you bloom here. I want to see you put forth some fruit. And I want this church to be helped and blessed because you're a part of this ministry. And it can be. It can be. And uh, certainly one or two can't do it all, but I'm glad as a team we can, we can uh, certainly get some things done for Christ. Pray for Sister Faye Bailey, she went home yesterday from the hospital, and she's doing well, and Brother Frank's here this morning, and uh, he sort of throwed something out there a little bit this morning and tried to want me to hurry up preaching. I mean, I know what he told me. I know what he said. But by the way, my watch is broke. The back, I have got five minutes to ten, and uh, I don't know when y'all going to get out unless somebody lets me have a watch. <laughs> I figured I'd get about 20, and if I did, I was going to pawn shop in the morning. And then I got to thinking about the fact that our people probably don't have anything but Timexes, so that wouldn't be too profitable. Well, we do have a clock back there, and we're going to be obedient to the Lord this morning and be also mindful of the time. But you pray for Sister Faye and pray that she'll be able to be back with us very soon, maybe next Sunday. And uh, she told me last week, she said, I'm going to be at church on Sunday. But I sort of figured that she wouldn't make it on Sunday. But I know where her heart is and her desire is. And I know where Brother Wolf's heart is and his desire is. I know where Brother Clarence's heart and his desire is. And I know that Brother Sam would love to be here this morning. And I know so many other people that would love to be in the house of God today. But because of sicknesses and things that they're going through, they're unable to be so. So that's the reason it's so important, folk, that you be at the church every time the doors are open. Well, we can, I start to say we can make excuses, but no, let me just say this. The devil can give you all kinds of excuses for you not to be here. But I can give you one good reason to be here. Jesus loves you. Amen? Let's have the ushers to come forward. We receive our offering this morning, and you give us given unto the Lord. I appreciate the song service this morning, and I appreciate the special music, and I'm glad today that... Uh, Hey, the best thing ever happened to us is when the Lord saved us. And when he saved us, he proved himself to be the lily when we're in the valley. And I'm glad it's by the way of the cross. And he did something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. That's what a, what a Savior is, by the way. 
So I just appreciate so much uh, the song service this morning and the message that we've had in song. We're going to ask God's blessing. Pray for Brother Donnie Murray. He'll be going in uh, this Thursday. He'll be having surgery. And you pray for him. Pray that everything will go well. And pray it'll be a quick recovery. And there won't be any problems or complications. I appreciate Brother Donnie. Known him for many, many, many years. And you pray that God's will be done in his surgery as he be, uh, will be done this coming Thursday. Amen. Brother Lee, would you come up here and lead us in a word of prayer? And that's God's blessing to be upon the offering, the gift, and the giver. And you give this morning as the Lord hath blessed and prospered you. Father, once again, I come before your presence, Father, to thank you for the privilege of being in your house, thank Father. You, yes. And God, we pray for every prayer request spoken in the church this morning. Father, God, you know their hearts and you know their yes. problems, Father. And God, we pray for the songs that were sung, Father. Yes. God, and we Absolutely. pray for the Sunday school teachers, Father. And God, most of all, we pray for our pastor, Father. God, that you stand with him. Give him strength, Father, and boldness to speak your holy word, Father. And if there's one here that needs to come to this altar for pray any reason, Father, we pray, dear God, that the Holy Spirit will help him make that first step, Father. And God, we'll love you and praise you and give you the glory for all you do. For I ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son and my Savior. Amen and amen. 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 I can say along with the songwriter, glory, I'm saved.
Amen. That's a good amen right there. Thank you. <laughs> amen. Also, we need to remember also uh, the family of uh, Sister Teresa Hallbrook's uncle. Uh, her uncle Ed died and passed away, and his funeral service is going to be probably the first part of the week. So, and that's up around Boone, North Carolina. So you pray for them and pray for the family, and I'm sure they'll be traveling up to go up there. So you pray for traveling mercies for them, that the Lord just watch over them and take care of them. I got a few verses I want to read to you this morning. Oh, let me, before I say that, let me just say I appreciate so much all the help that we had during the time that we had our tent meeting. I appreciate those that came and helped put the tent up and, and uh, all the help that we had during the week to getting the equipment and everything set up, even though two nights we had to move down and, and have the services here at the church because of uh, rain. But anyway, we still had a good service. And I certainly thank the Lord for the one that was saved. That was a blessing. And uh, so keep him and that person in your prayers. And I appreciate the opportunity that all that came out yesterday and took part and helped us to get everything uh, uh, put back to where it needed to be. So it just takes all of us working together. Okay, now I'm going to tell you how bad you are. Ain't none of us no good. You know that, don't you? Apart from the grace of God. I'm glad God makes a difference. I'm glad he makes a change. And there is a change when it comes about through the way of the cross. Something as big, big as God can't move in here unless it shows on the outside. But the Bible is plain to tell us that we certainly are not any good whatsoever. I want to read a few verses of Scripture to you this morning. In Isaiah, I may read these fast so you don't have to turn to these unless you just want to write them down. And if you want to turn to them, you can. But in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 6, the Bible says, But we are all, and notice the word all. You know what all means? Thank you, brother. It means all, and it means every one of us. Every single one of us. You say, preacher, that's in the Old Testament. Sure is. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So all the Scriptures inspired by God, therefore, all Scripture are written to us for our good. But we are all as unclean things. And all our righteousness, now notice that, that's another word I want you to notice, all our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we do all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. So I think this morning we can truthfully say, according to the Scriptures of the Word of God, and by the way, the Word of God is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. Now, men will tell you today they're not as bad as we think they are. I've seen people that thought they were real good. But apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and without experiencing the grace of God in your life, you're only as good enough for hell. The Bible says all our iniquities, and certainly we have many or had many. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 12 says, now I want you to notice once again, it says, they are all Gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good. No. Not one. Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23. <clears throat> For all. We still remember what the word all means? The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You know, in order to get a person saved, you must, first of all, get that person lost. And I, like you, have run across a lot of people that thought that they were good enough to get in heaven by their own merits and by their own goodness. But the Word of God is real plain here concerning this. 
that we just can't be good enough within ourselves and by our own. I've had some people say, well, I'm just as good as that person over there. I'm just as good as this person over here. I'm just as good as that person that goes to church every Sunday. And you may very well be. I'm not questioning that. But what the fact of the matter is, your goodness will not get you into heaven. Amen? What a, what a blessing. We, we can come to church and be at church, you know, every time the doors are open. You can put money in the offering plate. You can sing in the choir. You can play an instrument. You can, you can uh, 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 come out and cut the grass. You can do whatever needs to be done. But until you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, your goodness nor your good deeds will ever get you into heaven. Amen? So we see that we realize this morning that we certainly are not good. In the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, in this passage of Scripture, I have used quite often. It's such a blessed portion of Scripture. In 1 Corinthians 6 and verse number 9, the Bible says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's just sort of plain. That's every, no, that's everybody that's unrighteous. And every one of us fall into that category. Every one of us this, this morning are no good, and we are unrighteous within ourselves. And it tells, goes on there, it says, shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor intimate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Every one of us falls into that category because every one of us was born in sin. Therefore, every one of us were unrighteous. Now, let me just say this morning, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have changed that. Well, maybe I should say, He has changed that. Because of your faith and your trust that you have placed in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're here this morning and you have not, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, you have not had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you are still an unrighteous person. Now, I've seen a lot of people that had self-righteousness. They were self-righteous. That won't work either, by the way. But every one of us fall into the category that we were unrighteous. But as Paul Harvey would say now for the rest of the story. In verse number 11, the Bible says, And such were some of you. We all fell into that category. But we that have accepted Christ, it says now, But ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. The word wash there just simply means to be washed away. Thank God one day when you and I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and asked Him to come into our heart and save us and to cleanse us, I'm glad to report to you this morning that He washed all of our sins away. I'm glad to report to you. He says that He has cast them into the depths of the sea. He said He has put them and cast them behind His back. He says that they have been removed as far as the east is from the west. So let me just say this morning, thank God, if you have been washed, uh, now you're righteous. The Bible says not only washed, but it used the word sanctified. Sometimes the word sanctified scares Baptists to death. Um, Yay, we need to be sanctified. The word sanctified just simply means to separate. You see, when 
When God does a work in your life and you're washed, he separates us from those. He separates the righteous from the unrighteous. Now, the Bible says that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We're still going to have family and friends that are unrighteous and they've never been saved. But it means that we are to be sanctified, that we are to separate ourselves from those that do the things that's not pleasing unto the Lord. In other words, if you get saved, you still can't go to the bar with your friends. If you're saved this morning, you can't stand around and tell a bunch of dirty jokes with your friends that may be on the job in the morning. You'll have to, re- you'll have to excuse yourself and separate yourself and go away from that. You understand what I'm saying this morning? Even though we are, you uh, know, certainly we're in the the, the, the uh, minority speaking as far as how many saved and lost, but we're in the majority concerning God and Him being one and the great one and all that we need. But we see that we need the word separate. It also means the word dedicate. Those that are washed need to be dedicated. Dedicated unto the Lord. Someone told me this morning, says, Preacher, i got to go to a, a, a baby dedication. And, and that's good. I, I understand that. That's, that's good that we need to dedica- dedicate our children to the Lord. But I think back and I look around that congregation this morning, and I remember not too many months ago, we had baby dedication where they're at. Well, you say, that's between them and God. Boy, I'm glad that's right. I'm glad I don't have to worry about it. That's between them and the Lord, that's for sure. Not only does it mean to se- separate and to dedicate, but it means to saturate. The Bible says that He wants us to have the fullness of God in our life. We need to be full. We need to be full up to here with God on our life. And let me just say this morning, as a born-again believer, you can have as much of God as you desire. They say, well, boy, I'd like to be. How many times have I heard preachers saying, and I've probably been guilty of saying myself, boy, I wish I could be like the Apostle Paul. Well, I can If I want to do what the Apostle Paul did and put myself in a position... You see, God's not going to do any more for the Apostle Paul than He did for you and He'll do for me. But we see that they means to be saturated, which speaks of purity. And then the word justified there in that verse just simply means that we have been declared righteous through the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember I said that we have no righteousness within ourselves. But our righteousness is imputed to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that we can uh, uh, experience that. In the book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12, the Bible tells us there that we need to work out our own salvation. Now that doesn't mean that we got to work within ourselves to be saved. But we work after we've been saved and we manifest within ourselves what the grace of God had worked in our heart, it is manifested through our life that we live for the Lord Jesus Christ and we need to live a righteous and a holy and a dedicated and a consecrated Christian life for the Lord Jesus. And the word work out in that verse just simply means, or the two words there, just simply means to accomplish, to finish or to fashion or to perform. And that's what we're to do. And I just told you how bad we are. But the Bible also says that we can be good. Not within ourselves, but of course in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's some people sitting here in this congregation this morning. No doubt we would not like you very good if we knew you before you got saved. As that preacher preached Thursday night, there probably was a bunch of you that's in here with with nothing but hellions within yourself. You probably lived a wicked life. Probably lived a, a, a dangerous and a troublesome life. You probably did some things that you would be ashamed and embarrassed for this congregation to know of this morning. But thank God, aren't you glad for the goodness of God 
that makes it possible that we can have forgiveness of our sins no matter what they are, no matter how bad they are, no matter how corrupt they are, no matter what kind of life we live. Aren't you glad this morning to know that we can experience the goodness of God in our life and let God change our lives in a way that would glorify and magnify and exalt His wonderful name. The songwriter said, glory to His name. Woo! You see, we can be good. And we should be good. The Bible says that we need to be and can be a good soldier. A good soldier. What is a good soldier? Well, when we say soldier, we know how to identify the word soldier with our military. Now, if someone joins the military, and uh, of course the draft, they don't do that anymore, but at one time they've done the draft, and when they went into the military, what they would do when they went into the military, they would go to a certain um, um, uh, Fort Jackson or somewhere around, most of the time Fort Jackson in this area, they would send them there and up to Paris Island for the Marines and so forth. But they would send them there for what they call a six-week basic training. Now, the key word there is basic. You see, they're not going to get everything they're going to need in six weeks. So they, they should be always learning what it takes to be a good soldier. So it is concerning the work of God. So it is concerning the life of the person that puts their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be good soldiers. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 3 says... Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Can I say this morning? We have some of our people, some of our members of our church, some of our friends that are enduring the hardness of the Christian life. They're going through things now that is difficult. They're going through things that now is hard. They're going through things now that they're suffering and they're experiencing trouble in their life. Even though they are saved by the grace of God, the Bible says we must endure that as a good soldier. The Bible exhorts us to grow and let our faith increase. Just as a good soldier in our military armed forces today would always strive to be a good soldier and to learn more than what they get just at basic training. What they get at Fort Jackson is not going to get them through when they get over to the fields of Afghanistan. They're going to need more than that. In the heat of the battle, they're going to need more than that. Let me just say this morning, folks. We are to be good soldiers, and we should be good soldiers, and we can be good soldiers. But it's going to take a little effort and a little work on our part that we might grow to be a better and a good soldier for Jesus Christ. As a good soldier, number one, I'm going to try to hurry because I, won't, I know I won't get through, but I want to try to get as much as I can. But I want you to notice, number one, and I've mentioned this before, you have to realize who the enemy is. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the word adversary there means enemy, for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I noticed, I think one day this week in the newspaper, just a day or two ago, where... Someone was attacked up in New York at the zoo by one of those Siberian tigers. Somehow he survived. But let me just say today, the devil is our enemy. Folk, the church is not your enemy. The church and the church family and the brethren is not your enemy. The Bible says if anyone has a fault, that we are to go to re and restore that one in the spirit of meekness, lest that we fall into the same category. And if we have a problem with somebody else, and I'm not saying this is what it is, I'm just saying if there is, then you need to go to that person to get that straight out because we're not enemies. 
Enemies fight on different sides. If we're saved today and we're on the fam- in the family of God and then we're on the Lord's side, then we are not to fight amongst ourselves. A lot of people are dying and going to hell and people in churches today are fighting among themselves. What I hear sometimes that's going on in churches would, I started to say would curl my hair, but that's not very possible. Not would curl somebody's. But it's so silly and so frivolous and so in, insignificant. I tell you, you know what I prayed this past week when this person got saved up at the prayer, uh, up at the tent meeting? I said, God put that man in a good fundamental Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church where he can grow. And that's where you need to be. And this, the church is not the enemy. The devil's the enemy. Let me just say, in hurrying along, oh, let me just say this. I was mentioning about that gentleman being attacked up there in the zoo. But if you'll notice in the Bible there where it talks about the devil, how he walketh about. You see, he walks about to sneak up on his prey. The only time that the lion really gets in fast motion, when he gets ready to lunge on the prey. I've seen a few of these animal channels and they would show that, how that, a lion would lurk in the bushes and then all of a sudden if there's a little deer or whatever might be his prey, then all of a sudden he would just lunge out on that prey. That's the way the devil does God's people. He's just not all at once going to run and overcome you. He's walking about. He Listen, he's sneaking up on you. And when he gets to the point that he feels like that he has you at your weakest state, That's when the old sorry devil is going to make his move on you. And that's the reason this morning, folks, we need to be good soldiers. And know the enemy and know how that sorry rascal works. I can tell you right now, he don't play fair. There's been a time that I wish I could have got a hold of him and wrung his neck. But listen to me say, I'm not that stupid. As old brother David Pryor says, I may be some dumb, but I ain't plum dumb. I'm not about to try to take on the devil by myself. Because he's a lot stronger, more powerful. Whoo! But aren't you glad the Bible says, greater is he that is within than he that is without. Oh, he might have a big roar. He might have strong muscles. He might be able to, pr- uh, to, to pounce on the prey. But I'm glad we serve a God that's able to deliver. He's able to help the soldiers fight a good fight of faith and do what needs to be done. So we see not only the enemy as being a good soldier. But you need to be equipped right. Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that we are to put on the armor of God. Is that what it says? It says put on the whole armor of God. If you're going to fight the devil, you better have it all on. Don't, hey, don't, don't, be, don't, be, uh, don't be crazy. I mean, it'd be a foolish thing for, for, for a soldier man or a soldier lady to go out into the battlefield without the right equipment. Uh, I, you know, I understand. I don't know. Some of you fellas that's been in the military, you may can tell me. But I, I, I hear them talk about how heavy those backpacks that they carry out in the field are, plus all the armor that they wear and how heavy all that must be. But you see, they carry that for a reason. They don't carry that to hold them back. They carry that to help them and to be able to fight the de- to fight the enemy and to be able to defend themselves. That's the reason they have that big backpack. That's the reason they have those life vests on. That's the reason they carry their weapons. That's the reason they have the helmet on. Why? Because they're there with those things to protect themselves. And let me just say, the Bible says that we are to put on the whole armor of God in order that we might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He's a wicked person. He don't care who home, he doesn't care whose home he tears up. He don't care 
who's young person. He sends into the drug traffic. He don't care which young person or mom and dad ends up being a drunk. He don't care what he well, he don't care what church he gets into to stir up strife and envy and to cause the division and to cause the work of God to suffer. He don't care. He's not mindful. Of it. He absolutely has no respect for any of us. So we need to be not only know who the enemy is, but we need to know what kind of equipment. And then another thing, you need to be enlightened. You need to know what thus saith the Word of God. We got the book. We, we, if you will call it, we got the fighting manual. I don't know, I, I guess probably when, those, when men and ladies go into the military, I, I assume they probably give them some kind of manual. I know they have to give them a manual of how to tear down their weapons and clean them and put them back together and all that stuff. And they probably have a bunch of literature and manuals. But listen, the Word of God is our manual that we fight the devil with. The Bible tells us it's the sword of the Spirit. And there's many other things we can say about that this morning. And, but, but, but I just don't have time. But let me just mention a couple more to you right quick. Not only a good soldier but a good fighter. He said, oh, wait, a minute, wait a minute, preacher, what's, what's the difference? There's a lot of soldiers and a lot of people in our military that never sees the battlefield. I talked to someone the other day not too long ago. I can't remember who it was, but we were talking and he said something about, I asked him, was, in, was he, in the, he was in the military and I asked him, was he in the Vietnam War? I don't call it no conflict because there's a war. Over 50,000 of our men died. You call it what you want to. That's war. But I asked him about that, and he said, oh, no. He said, I wouldn't never, didn't, ever, didn't ever see any action on the battlefield. He said, I was out in the ocean. There's got to be some good fighters. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, chapter 6, and verse number 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. There's some things we need to fight for. Number one, we need to fight for people. Number two, we need to fight for some principles. Number three, we need to fight for the precepts of God's blessed word. I want to be a good soldier. And I want to be a good fighter. As a fighter and a soldier, when I go out, I want to go out like this. Number one, I want to go out with sweetness in my soul. I have seen so many people get bitter on God. I've seen so many people get an attitude toward God and God's people. I've seen so many people get upset because the carpet wasn't the color they wanted. I've heard of people that didn't like the chandeliers. And for the redneck folk and robot, those are the light fixtures. You don't know what chandeliers are. I've seen people get upset because they didn't call on me to sing. I've seen people get upset because the preacher didn't put my name in the bulletin. And I was the first one out there on Saturday morning to cut the grass. God help us. When I leave this world, I want to leave with a sweetness in my soul for serving the Lord Jesus Christ. So he can get glory out of it. By the way, I hope I leave waving. Hey, man, I don't want to. <laughs> Woo, I'm going out with the rapture to take place. Not only, not only do I want to leave out with sweetness, but I want to leave out singing. Hey, man. Sing amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Or go in there and strike up the course. God is so good. God has been good to me. Start singing, hey, what a, there is a fountain filled with blood. Start singing, oh, how I love Jesus. When I leave this world, I don't want to leave crying. I want to leave singing, amen. Not only that, I want to leave shouting. The Bible says the sound of the trump. 
Hey, I'm, hey, when Jesus comes back, or if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, either way, hey, when it comes down to my time to go, I want to leave shouting and praising the Lord. Why? Because He has been so good to me. And I want to be a good soldier. I want to be a good fighter. I want the world to know that I enjoyed what I'm doing for Jesus Christ and His glory. I also want to go down swinging. I want to fight the devil till Jesus comes. Within the, me and the Lord, not myself. Now, I'm not, hey, I'm glad the Lord's in our corner. Well, I'm glad, hey, whoo, hey, yeah, how many of you watch that wrestling? Go ahead and be honest. God already knows anyhow. Hey, hey, Edward's the only one this morning don't need to come to the altar. Well, there's Dalton. He, yeah. But you see that, I remember, I, I used to go to, I went to the Lord told him, I watched the Bolos and Johnny Weaver and George Baker and all them guys you remember. And I'm just going to share something with you. I'm going to bust your bubble. But it's all fake. <laughs> I, went up there the, I went up there at the auditorium one day. And, of course, they had the wrestling matches down in the, in the, in the auditorium in the basement, what they call the arena. And they'd put that big old, they'd put that ring up there and boy, people to fill the seats. They'd come back there and beat each other's brains out. And I said, man, whew. One day I was up there working the home show, and I said, I'm going to go back there and see where those wrestlers, where they get dressed. I walked back there, and there's a little old room, maybe the size of this platform, including the choir. And I looked around. I said, man, there's got to be a good side and a bad side. I didn't see no door that had bad guys on it. And another door had good guys on it. You know what? Them jokers got dressed in the same place. Now you can say what you want to. Somebody goes out there and beats my brains out. And he hits me in the head with a chair. When he goes back to get ready, if I'm in the same room he is, the, well, you get the picture. You got to be Christian kind of thing, you know, because this thing's going out on the internet. I mean, y'all know me, but then people on the internet don't know me as well as y'all do. You say what I'm trying to say. We need to go down swinging, fighting the devil. And let me just say this. I don't want nobody else doing my fighting for me. I don't want nobody else doing my praising. I don't want everybody else. Well, we're running out of time. This is good. We need to be good witnesses. We should be and can be good witnesses. I'm trying to get down to this one. We need to be good members. Amen? You need to be good members. You need to support the work of God. You, your, your pastor ought to be able to count on you to be in your place when it's time to worship. Now, let me just say this. You're not, you're not here to please me. You're here to please the Lord. But you may be surprised, that, and I'm going to sort of run these next two points together. Good members and a good and a good steward. The Bible tells us that a, a steward is an overseer, and whether you want to accept it or not, the Bible says that we are to obey them that have the rule over us. You say, "Well, wait a minute, preacher. I'm not doing that. I'm just not doing nothing." No preacher tells me to do. That's not what the word rule means. The Bible says that we are to be ruled. The, the word rule is to mean, uh, talking about the steward, is to rule or to lead or to have authority. There's got to be a leader. God places a pastor in a church to be a leader. Now let me just say this. There's some people, there's some men in the pulpit today that are not good leaders. We, but let's go back to the good members. Very simple here. I talked to someone this week. You know, an honest confession is good for the soul. That person said, preacher. And I told that person when, when they were talking to me, I said, now listen, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm preaching this this morning just because you've talked to me because I had this already wrote down before I ever knew you were going to talk to me. 
If that person said, Preacher, I know I haven't been doing what I should for Jesus. I know I've been slack. I know I haven't supported the church. I know I haven't done what I should be. But preacher, I want a difference in my life. But a good member of a good church will be faithful and serve the Lord with gladness and be in their place at the appointed hour to worship God. I said a moment ago, you don't have to come up with the excuses. The devil will give you them. Man, quiet in here now. Say, preacher, how can I be a good member? Well, I've already said by supporting the church and the work and the ministry. But you support it with your time. How much time do we spend in church a week? Two hours, two hours and a half on Sunday morning. Wednesday night, maybe an hour, hour and a half. So that's three, four hours. Sunday night, hour and a half. Less than seven hours a week that we spend in church and we say, well, I just couldn't make it. You'd be surprised at some of the excuses I've had. Well, maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you gave some of those excuses. Well, I start to say I've probably given some, but I, and and I say this to the glory of God, it's not within myself. But very very few times have I missed being in my place in the Lord's day. My pastor. I'm not pinning no bouquets on me. Hey, it's only by the grace of God. Hey, hey, everybody can do it. If, hey, if I was the only one who could do it, I'd be bragging. But I'm not bragging because every one of us can do it. But I was in my place every time the doors was open. The Bible says that the pastor is, a, is the bishop and he's the overseer. And he watches over your soul. You know, it's a sad thing today. But I think Sometimes I feel like, as the pastor, I care more about a person's soul than they care about their own soul. Because I wonder where they're at. I wonder why they're not coming. I wonder what's wrong. I wonder what's going on. You can call them. You can send them cards. You can, you can uh, witness to them. You can pray for them. And suddenly they just don't give a rip. So we see by our time, then also not only that, but our talent. Same person told me, said, Preacher, I I, I, want to help. I said, Jump right in. There's plenty to do. Your talent is not just singing behind this pulpit or singing in the choir playing those instruments. There's other people who have other talents, other ways they can use to glorify the Lord. There's plenty of work and plenty of jobs to be done in the church. But you know what the old cliche of most of them is? Just let the preacher do it. I appreciate the men of God that come out and help and work like they do here. We are blessed with men that are able and capable and, uh, and the availability that they have to come out and help here at the church and do things around the church that needs to be done. Thank God I am, I am blessed to have men like that to help us. But it goes the same thing. Well, let the preacher... And them other men do it. You want to be a good member? You do your part. Amen. We need prayer warriors. We need people that are willing to serve the Lord in all areas and all capacities. We need people to be faithful. We need people. We, we need people to get in our Sunday school hour. And come, come into our Sunday school hour and, and build up our Sunday school hour and bring them kids to Sunday school. Put them in a good class so they can learn some things about the Bible and the Word of God. There'll be a day maybe you might say, boy, I wish I'd have done that. When you say, well, preacher, I knew this was coming. Not only your time and your talent, but your time. What a joy it is to give to Jesus. And I've told you this a thousand times probably. You'll never outgive him. The more you give, the more he'll give back. But some people just aren't going to tithe. You know why, why most people won't tithe? They think the preacher's getting it all. 
Well, and see, I was trying to think. Somebody, oh, that person told me. I hadn't told you who it was, have I? Y'all don't know who I'm talking about, do you? Okay, good. The person told me the preacher hadn't been tithing like I ought to. You know what that person was saying, in essence? Preacher hadn't been a good church member, but I want to be. He he said, Preacher, I need some help. I need some encouragement. I need people praying for me. Not only that, the way you help your church is not only by those things, but also by having a good testimony. (coughs) Amen. If you go around somebody and you're talking about the goodness of God and you're talking about your church like some of our people do, brag on their church, brag on what God's doing and bragging on how good the services is and bragging on the good, the good singing and bragging, bragging on the, the good preaching and bragging on the good fellowship and uh, bragging on the good family and the good harmony that we have. I'll tell you right now, that's a good thing. But if you are standing around griping and complaining about your church and about your preacher... And about the singing, and about everything else that's going on, that's not a good testimony. You know what you're doing? Well, maybe not you. I, I was pointing to Brother Jesse there. No. no. <laughs> you know what people are doing? They're hindering the work of God. And I got news for you. They're going to pay one way or the other. And that's what causes fear in my heart. Now, God's going to do what's right, and God's going to do what's just. But sometimes, the wrath of God is what's right and what's just. You see, we can be good. We wasn't good. We wasn't good for nothing. And we still aren't, apart from God. But we can be a good soldier. We can be a good fighter. We can be a a good witness. We can be a good church member. And I myself want to be a good steward. I want to give you these last things and then we'll close. As a good steward, I want to lead you right. I don't want to lead nobody wrong. God knows my heart this morning. I, I would not want to lead you wrong. Not only do I want to lead you right, I want to love you right. Now, let me just say this. I'm never going to agree with you on your sin. If there's sin in your life, and there's things in your life that's not pleasing unto God, as a pastor and as an overseer and as a steward, I'm going to tell you if you're wrong. Because that's loving you right. I want to cry when you cry. I want to laugh when you laugh. And I want to love you right. And if the Lord takes us out of here before He takes some of you, which he, if, if the Lord doesn't come back soon, no doubt there will be some left behind that, that, that's going to be here after we're gone. But not only do I want to lead right and love right, I want to leave a legacy that's right. I want to leave something that people can follow. Concerning the love right, No matter how much you love people, some are not going to love you. They'll be disrespectful to you. They'll be short with you. They'll turn their head and not look you face to face. That just bothers me when somebody can't look me eyeball to eyeball and talk to me. But that's not going to stop me from loving them. It's not going to stop me from trying to lead them in the right way. And it shouldn't stop any of us. All of us have a job to do. We wasn't good. God made us good. And we need to improve on that by being good things in the work of the Lord. Let's stand with our head bowed and eyes closed.